What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So you guys asked me for it, we finally have it for you. Here are some examples of business logic flaws. Let's get right into it, shall we? Now the first one I want to show you is a lab. Thanks to Port Swigger, you guys are amazing. These labs are the best. I would really recommend that you guys look at them. Now this lab is a business logic vulnerability and it's called excessive trust in client side controls. I really like this lab. First of all, of course, there's a solution. You guys can look at that better if you want to. But of course, first we need to access the lab. Now, um, to get all of the traffic from this lab, I'm going to, of course, be using Burp Proxy. So let's go and do that right now, shall we? Now, the first thing, of course, there is a really cool feature in Burp Proxy. You can open the built-in browser and it'll only capture the requests from there, of course, unless you have any other proxies set up that's going to happen so as you can see we are in the labs right now and there are a couple of items that we can get in here now let's first of all add an item to the cart shall we this item here has a pretty big price this is the lightweight lead leather jacket and as you can see it has a price of 1337 dollars now we want to add this to our cart and then we're going to go to burp. So uh, let's go back to burp right here. And when we look in our proxy HTTP history, we can see a post call being made to the cart. Now there are a couple of things in here, um, a couple of parameters that are really freaking awesome we can play with. First of all, product idea. Now let's say there are some products that you cannot directly purchase from this website, like say product ID 100 you can actually change the product ID in here and see if you can actually add that item to the cart anyway, if it's not just a front end validation. There's also a redirect, which means that you go back to the product, a quantity and a price. Now this is the most interesting one for us. Of course, quantity is also interesting, but price, that should be a dead giveaway for you guys. So let's just send this to the repeater real quick and let's change this price. Now, first things first, I wanna clear my card, of course. Um, also wanna log in. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page here. There we go. First of all, of course, want to log in and the login that we've been given is Wiener and the password will be Peter. So when we log in, as you guys can see, our card is no longer the same because cards are bound to people. So again, we'll have to do the same request. Now we'll add this item to our cart and when we go back to our HTTP history, we should be able to see another post call. There we go. We can send this post call to the repeater, change the price a little bit, send it on. And now we should have two items in our cart. Let's first of all remove this one. And as you can see, the price is very, very low. Um, that's because we've changed the price to one and that's going to correspond to one cent. Let's quickly remove this and let's fire again just to make sure that we are actually correct in that. So when we refresh our card, there we go. We'll have an awesome leather jacket for just a single cent. Now let's place our order and that should complete our labs. Way to go guys, on to the next one, shall we? Now the next one is a little bit more complicated. It's also a logic vulnerability. This one is the high level logic vulnerability. Uh, let's access the labs again. So let's open this one in a new tab to get our own lab environment that we can work with. There we go. And now let's open this again in our built-in browser from Burp so that we, we can capture all of the traffic going through. And again, we're going to try the same. We're just going to add an item to the cart, but this time we're going to log in first so we don't have to repeat all of our actions. So when we log in, we can see that we have some store credit, $100, there we go. Um, again, some cool products in here. Let's try and buy the new jacket again, shall we? So let's add that to the cart. And we have an item added to the cart here. So when we go back to Burp Proxy, back to our HTTP history, we'll examine this post call again. And now we do not see a price, but we do see a quantity. So that might be an interesting field. We'll go back to the lab real quick. And when you guys deduct something from here, you guys can see that it's empty. There is nothing in the card because we don't have any items. But 
we can send that call again because as you can see quantity is just quantity minus one so it just took one of the quantity if we send this to the repeater and resend this request and we go back to our card of course we can see a negative amount for this price which will lead to a negative total amount now if we try to check this out this is not going to work because as you can see the card total price cannot be less than zero but this is where the really interesting uh, hack comes into play let's just call it you guys can see that we actually have $100 of store credit so what we're going to do is we're just going to add some extra items in there until we actually reach a positive amount that's less than 100 euros so if we add an item to the cart in here we can see that we're not even close to the amount that we need to be um, let's add about 200 of these not 1200 but 200 add them to the cart and then when we go to the cart we can see that we're way over our budget way more than we needed actually so sorry of course we only needed 20 of those so let's try that again but this time properly so let's add 20 of those to our cart and now when we go to the cart we can see that we have a total of 38 dollars so we'll order our lightweight jacket and burp protection 20 times for just 38 dollars that sounds awesome what do you guys think now another cool way to go about this would be if we have a minus one we could find a product that has the same price if that's available of course we can just add that and then we can add some other items to bring our order to positive again in this case we've added 20 burp protections so we'll just place the order and there we go we have an order that's not even close to what we should be paying really cool vulnerability now on to the last one for you guys this was the high level uh, logic vulnerability there's also of course a low level uh, vulnerability so we'll go back to the labs real quick here so to the business logic vulnerabilities and we need our low oh sorry that's the wrong key of course we need our low level vulnerability so we'll go to our examples and here we will find our low level there we go logic flaw now in this it's important we'll look at this hint you will need to use burp intruder to solve this lab so let's see what we can do about that again we'll need a url for our lab environment so we'll get that real quick there we go and we'll paste that into our built-in burp browser now this is to intercept the traffic of course uh, and now this is a really interesting vulnerability because again we're going to log in with the same data that we've got before Wiener Peter and again we have our store credit now this is a really interesting one I'll tell you guys why in a second of course we're going to repeat the same steps we're going to add an item to our cart we're going to look and if we try to do this again of course it's going to remove the item from the cart We'll go back to burp to our proxy and see if we can get any negative amounts in there so we'll send this to the repeater we'll send it over and now look at our cart real quick again so this didn't work we didn't get anything negative in here even though we sent a negative quantity it seems like the server is checking things a bit better these days so what are we going to do about that a couple of things we can do of course we added this product to our cart so we'll send this call to the intruder and this is an interesting vulnerability because it's actually an overflow vulnerability so we'll add the quantity 99 here and we're just going to keep sending these requests and we're just going to keep adding items to the cart now we want to do this infinitely so we'll put up a null uh, payloads there we go as a payload type and we'll keep generating indefinitely to see what happens so there we go our attack has been started we keep generating requests to the cart so let's navigate to the cart real quick shall we let me open the cart we can see things happening and we can see negative amounts appearing every now and again we can see the value adding up until it finally becomes negative then it starts counting up to zero and then it goes over negative again now this is a typical case of uh, overflow because the value is larger than can be contained in that variable so what's going to happen is we're going to have to find a way to get again at positive store credit 
while being able to buy new items. So we're going to stop our attack from intruder real quick. We don't need this anymore. Um, we'll try to first of all add enough uh, lightweight jackets to where we get close to zero. So we'll clear our cart real quick here. Let's remove all of the items. And now this is important. We need to generate the exact amount of payloads to get to close to zero. So um, to get really close to zero, we'll need 332 payloads in this case, times 99 items. So times 99 items will equal about 32,000 items. Now when we do 32,000, so 32,000, when we multiply that by the price of the item, you will know, ooh, sorry about that guys, there we go. You will note that that's about double the price that will fit into the variable. Now, if this doesn't make any sense, don't worry about that. You just need to be able to calculate how often you need to fire the payload to get the correct pricing. Now, when we start our attack, it's really important because I've done something wrong here. When I go to my options, we'll quickly stop this attack. When we go to our options, I put my number of threads to five. That's going to give a problem here because there are some race conditions as well in this functionality. So when uh, two sequential um, calls get sent at the same time, they might cause like a double or triple effect and there might be too much or too little items in our cart. So to prevent this, of course, again, we're going to have to clean our cart and remove all of the items. We're going to have to run with one thread and we're going to start the attack. Now, when we start the attack, this might take a while because we're running with a single thread. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to generate a huge amount of items, so 32,000 items, which is almost going to bring us to zero value. Now, we won't have exactly zero value. We will still have a negative amount, a negative total in our cart. But there is a way, again, we can do the same thing as we did previously to get that total to positive and get things for way, way cheaper. So as you can see, we are almost there now. Just a few more requests and when the request will have finished, we should be closer to zero. Now we won't be there exactly yet. So let's just let this run for a couple more seconds and check out our results. As you guys can see, we still need quite a lot to get to zero. Um, to do that, we just need, I think it's 42 more. So let's go to the repeater real quick, shall we? And we need to add 42 more. So after doing that, we can check out our cart again. And we are not close yet, so we need about five more, I think. Let's keep adding a couple until we are getting closer to zero. And now we're almost there. Now we just need some more of a couple of other items and we are in the positive again. Uh, we'll take some random items from here. Let's just take the sarcastic eight ball. Let's add 80 of these. There we go, add them to the cart. And now let's check out our cart. We are way above that, so we should add a lot less. Let's remove this again. Uh, let's try with doing, I don't know, let's try with doing 20. So we add 20 items to our cart and we are not positive yet, but we can easily just increase the amount from our cart to get to a positive amount that's less than our $100 store credit. Now, if we place our order, we will add, we will order 29 sarcastic nine balls and 32K light, lightweight lead leather jackets and that all for a grand total of $36. So that was a really cool way to demonstrate some logic, business flaws, some vulnerabilities for you guys. I hope you guys learned something from this. Have you found any logic flaws or logic vulnerabilities in the wild while bug bounty? Let me, uh, leave me a comment below if you guys have. I'm really interested to learn about your guys' vulnerabilities. I have to say the vulnerabilities that I found here are really close to things that I would find in real life. So it's not exactly going to be in this way, but it's going to be very much related to this kind of stuff, you know, being able to order stuff that you shouldn't be able to order, 
being able to bypass some stuff that you shouldn't bypass by doing way too much. And this is why fuzzing is so important, because when you fuzz your endpoints, you're going to get unexpected results. As you guys saw with the intruder, when we kept adding lightweight leather jackets, they suddenly jumped to a negative price. So those are the things you will learn from fuzzing and it should help you, but you have to really be able to know what you're doing before you can find these vulnerabilities, of course. It's not as easy as tr just going out and trying to find cross-site scripting by fuzzing every parameter. You really have to know what your application should be capable of doing and how you can try to bypass any of that stuff, you know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoy making these videos. It would really appreciate. I would really appreciate it though if you guys could leave me a like because I do spend quite a lot of time on these videos, uh, even though it might not seem like it. I really do, and I really enjoy teaching you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.